Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Conversations with Camden. Tonight we're going to be talking about transferring to CMA. Um, it will be a discussion about transferring immediately or second semester or even next year. So be sure to uh, light up social media with any questions that you may have. You can also drop them in the uh, comments section here on YouTube and we'll get as many questions as possible. Um, if you are using uh, other platforms, please use the hashtag Camden Military. So it's hashtag Camden Military and uh, we will get to those questions just as soon as possible. Um, to get started tonight, though, I want to introduce you to our panel of, of guys here to uh, answer your questions this evening. And we'll start out with uh, Captain Trapp over here. So, Captain Trapp, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, good evening, everyone. My name is Mac Trapp. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Camden Military. Um, I was a teacher and a coach here before I stepped into admissions, so I can kind of talk a a little bit about across the board from sports we have here to academics and then of course admissions but uh looking forward to a great night and um like casey was saying you know just any questions you have ask away all right and then we've got two current students with us here one junior one senior um we'll let the senior go first i guess he's he's you know we'll make him feel a little more important tonight um so barbu if you will tell us your first name uh, last name you know where you're from how long you've been at cma Hello, I'm Lucas Barbu. I'm from Michigan, Ann Arbor. Um, I came here at the beginning of my junior year, and it's been great since. And Lucas, I'm assuming you're a big Ohio State fan, right? Oh, kidding. yeah. No. Kidding. All, right. <laughs> All right. Williams, tell us uh, your name, where you're from, and how long you've been here at CMA. Hi, my name is Jaden Williams. Um, I've been here for three years. I came here initially for summer school, and I've been here since my junior year, so I seem to like it. And um, I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. So not too far. Um, God's country, we call it. University of South Carolina is there. So good. All right. I um, want to talk to you guys, um, just kind of, you know, break the ice with this question, because with the viewers tonight, I'm sure, um, you know, they're probably weighing their um, their options and trying to decide if Camden's a good fit for them. And so whose idea was it initially um, when the idea for a change came up at home? Whose idea was it to who found Camden and, and why do you think they found it? Um, Williams, we'll start with you. Um, for me, it was my brother. It was my brother's idea. Um, he initially came his uh, sophomore year and he seemed to like it. And he told me about it when I was in summer school. Well, not in summer school, but when I was an eighth grader. And he was telling me how great the school was. He was like, it's really good for academics. And it's like, you can like get your life together here. I was like, okay, I'll try it out. And I've been here ever since. Okay. And how about you, Barbu? So my parents have actually known about the school for a pretty long time. They were going to send my oldest brother here when he was starting high school, but he decided to do homeschooling instead. And I was kind of given the option, like, military academy or homeschool and for me homeschooling is not my thing because it's just not immersive at all so i took the option of military academy um because my grades were not the best i wasn't focused on school and now i've been here and things have changed a lot since good well that was perfect segue not planned at all but, you know, that was going to ask you about your grades, you know, before Camden. So what, what was kind of the trigger that, that made your parents and you decide, hey, we need to make a change? So um, it was like about the start of sophomore year when I started getting really bad grades because I was like, OK, my whole high school career is already flunked at this point. I thought it was the end of the world. And I was like well, there's no point of even trying now. And by the end of the school year, I was skipping school to hang out with my friends. And I had solid E's and D's for my class average, probably. And my parents were like, okay, this, this is not how you're going to continue your life. Like you will not, it's not even only about the grades, but just my habits that I had, like not getting anything done throughout the day. So coming here really provided a really good structure, having study hall where I had the set time every single night where I could study from 7.30 to 9 o'clock, no interruptions, be done. Yep. All right, good. Thanks for sharing. And Williams, kind of the same question. 
I think academically you may have been okay, but what some, maybe some other reasons that your family thought, hey, we need to give Camden a shot? I think for me, I think it was the structure because, you know, there's not really any structure in like a normal public school. I remember when I first got here, like just how organized the place was. I remember my first formation. I remember coming to Alpha Company and as soon as I get there, it was lunchtime. I got in a formation and we marched right over to the chow hall. It's just the structure here is amazing. It's just like the amazing like organization, everything. So I think that's what I needed as well. So, All right. Good stuff. All right, Captain Trap. We have a question from Twitter that I'm going to throw at you. Um, it says, can you share more about the study hall structure? What actually happens during study hall? Yep. So study hall is probably one of our, like Barbie was saying, probably one of the things that helps our guys out um, more so than anything, because a lot of the times I hear a parent talking and, you know, when it comes to class, you know, my son's paying attention in class. He's doing his work in class. He's acing all of his tests. But all of a sudden, when it comes to the independent work and the homework and everything else, it's just not getting done. Um, so we we set a time, you know, set aside that time for them to work on homework and, and study for tests. And that's our study hall. Uh, the neat thing about it um, from coming from a teacher's perspective is, you know, even right now or in about 30 minutes or so, we're going to start our study hall and there'll be a teacher assigned to each one of the barracks. And, you know, the teacher's there for a couple different reasons. Uh, one, to make sure they're staying on task. You know, they can't be on their electronics. They can't be goofing off. Um, but they're also there for academic support. So if they do have a question about math or science or history, you know, they've got a teacher that can assist them with that. And then, of course, you can also uh, look to your peers. You know, there's the option of if you have a certain class with a student and, and they're a little bit better at it, then you can get that one on one peer help, too. So, you know, I'm sure Barbu and Williams, you, you guys can both talk about, you know, the study hall aspect of it. But I think it's very beneficial for uh, for our students. Yeah. Yeah. So a good, another good segue there, um, Barbie, kind of talk about maybe something that's offered here or support that you have here that wasn't available back at your, your home school. So being a senior, I've started looking into the whole college application process a lot. And I've had a lot of help so far with college advising, um, where I should go, why I should go there how to build my resume and how to submit my applications on time, like have it all organized so that I'm getting everything done. And I don't know, being back at a public public school, yes, you do have school counselors, but do they really do that much to help you personally and take that time? Unlike here, every student senior is assigned a college advisor. So that was really helpful. I really appreciate that. Yeah, good. And Williams, we'll ask you the same question. What's something kind of unique or different that Camden does that maybe wasn't available at your, your previous school? I feel like the, uh, the teacher help, like the amount of teachers that like actually help the students here is quite amazing. Like the teachers are here from like 9.30 to sometimes five o'clock in the evening. And that goes for like the study hall teachers too. They'll stay here till nine o'clock at night. So I feel like you can ask them anything, any like school related work. It's quite amazing. And it, it really helps you out if you like, you know, ask them a question about a classwork assignment. So, yeah. And Matt, why don't you talk a little bit about like the classroom size, um, you know, as a teacher, did that really make a difference to you? It did. Um, classroom size, you know, for us, it's about anywhere from eight to 12 students for a class. And that, you know, I think from a student standpoint and a teacher standpoint, you've just got that one on one time with the students. You've got the the extra time that you can focus on. You know, if, if someone's struggling or if the student's struggling, he can ask those questions and not get looked over. Um, you know, my, my wife is a public school teacher and, you know, she's got quite a, a lot of uh, fourth graders. So, you know, when it comes to that, it, it's tough. And sometimes you just can't get that individualized approach like we can here. So I would say class sizes, uh, definitely the smaller class sizes are, are extremely beneficial, both from a teacher standpoint and, and for our students. And I'm, I'm sure Williams and Barbu, you both can talk to that because um, the neat thing too, Barbu, I believe you've taken some college level courses here too. And, you know, that, that might impact um, college level work, work at a smaller class size. 
Yeah, because especially if you're planning on going to like a public university, a large public university, you know, I remember my very first Monday morning, eight o'clock class at the University of South Carolina, I had like 215 kids and I was like, what am I doing? You know, so um, it's going to be a big, big change from 12 to 15 or, you know, at the, at the max in, our, in a class here at CMA. Um, so, Barbara, we do offer the college classes here. So talk a little bit about that. Is that something you've enjoyed? Um, is it is it really that much harder? Does it add too much to the schedule? Um, the college classes don't add any more time to the schedule. Like I still have the regular school schedule, but it is so nice having a small class for a college class because uh, I can't imagine like a regular lecture hall for your prereqs. You wouldn't be able to get any help personally from the teacher. Whereas here, it's such a good I don't know, like I'm surprised how well I'm doing right now because I'm able to get time with the teacher after class, after school, during class. So it is nice. Um, Study hall, I'm able to use my laptop and go to the library and get my own time to finish the work and turn it in. So it's all great. Okay. All right. And we have another question coming in on Twitter. Um, well, I guess it's not Twitter. Should I be saying X? I don't know. But anyway, from, from that platform, um, formerly known as Twitter, um, if my son transfer now, will he be behind? And how do we know what transfers in terms of credits? Um, good question. And Trap, we'll let you answer that one. Yep. So um, if he transfers right now, like, like Casey said at the start of this, we are taking immediate transfers in. Um, it won't be any issue. You know, we've had guys transfer in. We've actually got a couple of new students coming in just this week. So uh, what we'll do is we'll basically get some unofficial transcripts uh, from you guys and we'll start working on his scheduling. Now, depending on his grade level, you know, if he's in high school or his senior year, or anything like that, um, you know, the, the block scheduling sometimes is a contingency, uh, but we can work with that. So I always tell parents uh, to that capacity, the sooner the better. Um, you know, even if he's transferring in now, the sooner we can get him here, the better off he'll be um, to stay on track. But as far as credits are concerned, you know, we're credited by Cognia. They've basically gone by various acronyms in the past, but they're an international accreditation for private schools. Um, so any credits he's earned up to this point will transfer in and uh, any credits he earns while he's here will, will transfer back out. If, if he ends up going back to the school he was at, or if he, you know, ends up applying to a college. Yeah. So the whole transfer about coming in and out, that that's usually um, pretty simple um, streamlined process for you. Um, we do have some families that will actually send us an unofficial transcript prior to the application. That's fine. We can take a look, put you in touch with our academic people and let them kind of talk to you and drop a mock schedule, um, you know, what it would take to, to get to graduation. So, um, but yeah, there's email address that will be on the end card tonight, um, or you can just send it. My email is admissions at camdenmilitary.com and Max is enroll at camdenmilitary.com. So uh, simple uh, email addresses. So you can get in touch with us there. Um, another question for the guys I want to throw out is, um, do you view academics differently now? Um, so, you know, did you really care about school before and has something happened here to change your views on that? And, uh, Williams, we'll start with you. I feel like at first academically I was okay. Like I was like making A's and B's, you know, the usual. And I mean, I still valued it, but not as much as I do here. I think the organization and all and all that type of stuff really helps. Right now, I'm like a honor roll, perfect student. I feel like that wouldn't happen in public school. So, yeah. Okay. Barbara, same question. So, in my previous high school years, I had terrible grades because I I really had no hope for after high school. I didn't have <laughs> any motivation or inspiration. I just thought well, I'm going to have fun and that's going to be it. Um, but when I got here, I I knew within myself, like I do want to get better grades because I can't keep going on like this. So my teachers helped me with that. But regarding after high school, I was really inspired by a lot of the teachers who come from so many different like jobs and backgrounds. And I was like, wow, well, these guys are... <laughs> such educated people and i was like i'm i want to strive to be like that so 
college is a big thing for after high school for me now that I still want to strive to get towards. All right. Good stuff. All right. Question we have is, was it hard to make friends and acclimate to CMA? Um, what's the friends like here? It was, was it hard to make friends, Jaden, when you first arrived? Honestly, for me, it's really not that hard to make friends. I feel like since everybody's going through the same thing, it's, it's a lot easier to make friends here at CMA. You know, you guys, you guys do the same things every day, clean your rooms, you know, occasionally march pad together. Um, you know, all that type of stuff. It really adds to everything. So I feel like making friends here isn't that hard. I really don't. So. Okay. And Barbu, of course, you're from a lot farther away, uh, being from Michigan. So was it hard for you to kind of adjust to the whole, um, act, the military setting and, and, you know, new friends and all that? How was it for you? So that was the biggest thing, like coming from Michigan all the way to here. I was so scared, like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to lose all my friends now. But immediately when I joined the school, I joined the school's football team. And that was automatically like they're your friends right there. Like you guys all participate together and you kind of accidentally become closer with people than you didn't think you would at all. Like since we spend all day, every day here together, we become like a brotherhood more than a friendship. Good job. All right. Before we leave academics, I want to give you a chance to talk about your favorite teacher and tell me why they're your favorite teacher. All right, Williams. Um, I'd have to say it's Captain Davis. He's my dual enrollment instructor. And I feel like he makes the dual enrollment classes a lot more enjoyable because, you know, at like a regular public university, you know, you'd be sitting in like a lecture hall, you know, with like 200, 100 students and, like CMA, it's like eight. So I think the smallest class size I have is five. So, and he makes his classes a lot more enjoyable. Like today, we just played Jeopardy for psychology. So, all right, good. And Barbu, how about you? Um, my favorite teacher right now is Major Spratt. He's my English 101 teacher. He used to teach at um, University of South Carolina. And he had a doctorate in philosophy, and I don't know, it's something about that that really shows off for him. And I really like the words that he tells us every day. It's really inspiring. All right. Good stuff. All right. We did have a question come in about sports. Um, said, I was wondering how sports work, similar like a sport like basketball fits into your schedule. So um, I know, um, Barbu, you play lacrosse, right? No, sir. Oh, what sport do you play? Sorry. I played football last year. I know you play football. Yeah. So, what, all right. Tell me about football. How does that kind of fit into your schedule? So, football was from four to six. And I know they changed it a little bit this year. They had like football practice sometimes in the morning. And sometimes we would have lifting in the morning last year, which was very nice. Games would be on Fridays. We would get to leave school early on Fridays and it was all that exciting thing. So it's kind of the same as like regular school. Not too much different, I guess. And Jaden, how about you? Do you play any sports? I do not play any sports, but I am in a ton of clubs. So Good. Talk to us about the clubs. How does that fit into your schedule? The clubs, they're pretty, um, they're really, I'd say they're, um, they fit in my schedule pretty easily. I'm in four right now. My main one being Boy Scouts. We have a meeting every Tuesday night. So it's really easy to fit it all in, in your schedule. So, yeah. Okay. When do you typically meet? When were clubs typically meeting? Clubs typically meet after school. I'd say like 30 minutes after school ends. Um, Boy Scouts always meets on Tuesdays, uh, Tuesdays at like seven, right before study hall. So. Um, I know CAP meets right after school. So. And Barbu, I knew you played football last year and you're not playing this year, but um, I don't think it's because you hate the sport, but you kind of had an injury last year that kind of threw things off for you, correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. So do you miss playing football? I do miss playing football. Plenty. Plenty. That was so much fun. 
Yeah, you were a good player. All right, let's go on now and talk about kind of daily life and, you know, what's a day in the life like here. So uh, let's start out with Barbu. You kind of take us through wake up to lunch, and then Williams will let you talk about from lunch until lights out. So waking up at six is like the big shocking factor for everybody. I don't know why. It's like you get used to it, and it becomes habit. And I actually like it because, I don't know, now my body's used to going to bed at this time, waking up at this time. I know, like, the schedule for the rest of the day. Lunch is at 7. Clean your room from that time, 6 to 7. I mean, breakfast, I'm sorry. Um, After breakfast, sometimes we have physical activity or, like, marching practice. And then we go off to class until lunchtime, which is about 12. So. All right. And then Williams, if you will, take us from lunch until lights out. <laughs> so after lunch, you'll have your um, four through six periods. And then after that, school ends. And obviously, you'll go to um, either pad. If you don't have pad. You can stay in your barracks. We have intramurals, which is kind of like for the people that don't play sports. And it's, it's pretty fun. It's like company v. company. And it consists of like frisbee, football, soccer. It's it's really fun. I like it. And then if if you don't do anything that day, if you have clubs, you go to clubs. Um, around six o'clock, we march over to the dining facility to go have a uh, dinner. Then after dinner, we have um, study hall, and study hall is from seven o'clock to nine o'clock. And then after that, the AC will leave, and then we go to sleep. So. All right, yeah, we all hear taps being played over the uh, bugle every night at 10 o'clock. Yeah. My little English bulldog goes to the door to look out every night at 10. I know it's time she gets down and gets <laughs> water, and then it's time to go to bed. All right, a um, few questions came in on Twitter. Um, what is PAD? Good question. Um, why don't, Barbu, why don't you take that one? What is PAD? So PAD is, I guess, the disciplinary system of what you get when you're not doing what you're told. And it's pretty easy not to get pad. I say it's like, I don't know, to get a lot of days of pad, you have to work pretty hard and like always be that guy who's fighting against your leaders for some reason. But I did learn last year at the beginning of the year, the easiest thing to do is just keep your mouth shut because talking back isn't going to get you anywhere. <laughs> And that goes for at home too, right? <laughs> you don't always have to have the last word. <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, let's see, I have another question come in here from Facebook. Um, how do your parents think you've changed since you've been enrolled? Hmm. Okay, good question. Um, Williams, have you, has your mom noticed any big changes in you? She has actually. Every time I come home from a furlough, she's always like, man, Jaden, you clean your room? I was like, yes, mom, I do. So. <laughs> Um, I've, I've been cleaning my room a lot more. I'm more organized for sure. Um, definitely more disciplined. So I think that's definitely helped me. So. Barbu, same question for you. Your parents noticed any changes? Definitely. I think, well, I used to wake up a lot later. And now my dad's kind of excited when he sees me waking up early and like going outside to mow the lawn without him having to say something just because it's like, I don't know. Small things like that, that my parents noticed that I didn't think was such a big deal. So. Yeah, good stuff. All right, got another question coming in from Twitter. It says, um, weekends, what happens on the weekends when you're not in school? We do have classes about once every fifth or sixth weekend, but then we have some fun too. So, um, Barbie, why don't you kind of tell them what we do for fun? So sometimes we have like those sports events on Saturday mornings and sometimes recently we've even had the headmaster come out with the commandant and like serve snow cones and it was pretty cool because we haven't had that before. Um, free time is really long so that's a nice time to kind of calm down from school, um, go to the weight room, play sports with your friends or chill out in the Carl house where you could get uh, food, snacks, or like play games, board games, pool, watch TV. It's a lot of stuff. Good. And we do have some trips that we offer the students. Um, we went to see the Panthers play uh, 
we went to the stadium. Panthers didn't really play all that much, but um, we watched the game. And um, we go to some NBA games up in Charlotte. Um, and some guys are going over to the University of South Carolina football game um, against Florida here in a couple of weeks. So um, we do those type things. We actually have a paintball trip tonight um, or this afternoon going into the evening where we accompany a group of about 50 or 60 students are out playing paintball. So we do that some movie trips. So um, it's a good, you know, good stuff to kind of fill the time and uh, keep these guys busy. If they stay busy, they stay out of trouble. So we'd like to keep them as busy as possible. Um, Mac, good question for you. Um, this one's coming from Facebook. What is the technology policy and how strict are you? Yep. Good question. Um, question I get a lot from parents too. So uh, we do allow electronics. So if you come on a tour of campus, if you look in the guys' rooms, you know, they're going to have TVs, they're going to have their uh, gaming systems and, you know, they're going to have cell phones. Uh, we allow all of that. Now we are pretty strict on it. So, you know, if your son does bring uh, technology for us, that is a privilege. So as long as he's abiding by our rules, you know, not getting on it, you know, all hours of the night, not getting on it during study hall and, you know, they can't take their phones to class. So as long as they're not taking their phones to class, if they're just using it in the afternoons to call you guys and, and use it, you know, they've only got about two hours a day that they're going to be able to use it. So it does kind of limit the time that they can stay on it. But we do allow electronics um, and, you know, we are pretty strict on it. But again, as, as long as you abide by the rules, then, um, you know, I know Williams and Barbu both have, have utilized it while they're here. And I don't think they've had any issues, you know, having it taken or, you know, abiding by any of our policies that go along with it. All right. And then a question we often get, um, but I want to talk briefly about is how often will I get to see my son? Um, you know, can I visit um, that type of thing? You can always visit campus. Um, we have an open campus. We'll have parades um, throughout the year. We'll have some, you know opportunities for you to come on and meet with teachers, whatnot. Um, but we also have a good many breaks throughout the year. And we just came back from a fall break. Um, was that last weekend? So, uh, you know, these guys basically have guaranteed breaks. Uh, fall break, which we just got back from, Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, presidential furlough weekend, which is President's Day in February, and then spring break. Those are guaranteed breaks. But then we have brought back merit furloughs this year um, where students who earn a certain number of merits will be able to choose an additional weekend to go home um, once in the fall and once in the spring. So uh, lots of opportunities for guys to go home. Seniors get a little extra privilege with college visits and things like that happening. So um you know, yeah, you'll you'll still be able to stay in touch um, with the electronics and the cell phones. Of course, you can text and call and do all that good stuff um, as often as you like. Back to the guys real quick. Um, Barbu, I know when you first started, we do take your cell phone for two weeks. Um, how did you survive that? Were you able to survive? Uh, talk a little bit about that. Surprising thing is I did survive. Crazy. <laughs> but that's kind of one of the things like the major things that a lot of students and parents are worried about when they're coming here is like oh my gosh i'm gonna have to go two weeks without my phone i stayed in contact with my parents mm -hmm. and all my siblings by actually setting sending letters which was the first time i did that in my life but it got pretty fun it was like an interesting thing like oh i gotta go check the mail to see if my letter from my mom came in um and yeah they have i don't know it was it was fine i survived you survived <laughs> all right williams how about you what was a, a big change or maybe something you missed from home that's not here at cma and then was it as bad as you imagined it would be i feel like the biggest thing on this is my bed but um I mean, the beds here are pretty comfortable, but yeah. It's not home, right? Yes, yeah, not home. <laughs> not home. All right, let's get another good, honest question out there. How's the food? I get that question a good bit. So, um, Williams, we'll start with you. The food is not bad. I will say, though, it's better than public school. Um, I mean, we have taco Thursday. We have chicken wings on Friday. It's, it's really not that bad. I'd say that the worst meal, though, in my opinion, is the meatloaf. Um, but other than that, the food's not bad. So. I like meatloaf. What's wrong with meatloaf? All right. Tell me <laughs> tell me your best meal. You tell me your worst. Tell me your best. Definitely the tacos. I'd say, the, I'd say it's definitely the tacos, for sure. Definitely. Right. 
Barbu, give us your feedback on food. What what do you think it is? In my opinion, the best food that they have is either like the barbecue ribs or the barbecue Ooh. wings with the mac and cheese and like a little yeah. nice piece of bread. Get a dessert on your way out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Typical teenager. <laughs> yeah. It could be like uh, Captain Trap over there. As long as you have chicken fingers, you're happy. You're good to exactly. go. Exactly. So you never grow out of them. <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk about how campus has changed a little bit. We've, um, you know, during COVID, we had some, or pre-COVID, we had some pretty big plans. We were going to, you know, expand or build a new gymnasium, things like that. Um, COVID kind of derailed some of those plans, and now it's in a, you know, five or 10-year plan. But we have made a a few campus facility improvements over the summer this year. Um, Barbie, why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about something you've noticed on campus that's maybe changed or got refreshed? Well, they started redoing the entire gym. So that's pretty nice. Like last year, the weight room had pretty old equipment. And I think they made that like the athletic department, one of the main jobs that they wanted to switch up this year. So now we have a lot more equipment for more people to use. Um, They redid the outside, just cooler aesthetic. Yeah, cool. And um. Jalen, Jaden, do you use the weight room and how do you like the new equipment? I do. I do use the weight room. The weight, the weight equipment is very nice. Um, it's really modern. So I, I really do like it. And I, another big thing I've noticed is that they redid some of the stuff in my company. So like they, I know they redid like the hallway and like they redid like most of the rooms. So like the rooms in Alpha Company are mainly like hardwood floors, which is really nice. So you don't have to like vacuum your floor every day. Yeah, uh, it was like it's like my biggest pet peeves. Yeah, those those wood floors a little easier to keep clean. Yeah. All right. Um, talk. Tell me some stories about leadership. Um, have you found yourself in a leadership role um, since you've been here that maybe the old you wouldn't have seen yourself being able to do? Um, is there a job or a role that you've been involved in? Um, Barbie, we'll start with you. So this year I became second lieutenant, which means I'm the platoon leader. And I honestly, at the beginning of the summer, I didn't know I was going to be given this job. And I was really freaked out because earlier in my life, I've never been given like a leadership role where I actually had people under me who are supposed to look up to me. So that was a really freaky thing. But I kind of just looked at like my past leaders and what they did right or um, like attack officers, kind of how they handle things. And it really has made me more of like a, I don't know, confident person because I've never had to, like yelling at people isn't really good, but like I've never had to do that. And I've learned some things from becoming a leader that I haven't before. Good stuff. And William, same question for you. Have you found yourself placed in a maybe a leadership role or a situation that you wouldn't have thought you would be able to tackle um, prior to coming to Camden? I have. Um, I'm a platoon sergeant now in Alpha Company, and I'm over 23 people. And I have to say the same thing. It's really freaky at first to see all these cadets looking up to you. I've never been somebody's role model, so I think it's really cool that people look up to me and having that responsibility is cool. So, yeah. And then you brought up a great, great point there um, that, you know, you, you do have the seventh, eighth graders looking up to you leaders, um, you know, around campus and, you know, they want to be like you, but who do you look up to? Who, who would you consider a mentor for you um, while you're here at, on campus at CMA? I think the TAC officers and the teachers really because we know them best while we're here so tack officers telling their stories is really bizarre sometimes and what they've gone through and i'm like man i think i'm having a tough time but and that's because they were in the military exactly (laughs) i don't want people to think they were like you know in a insane asylum (laughs) previous to working here or something so yeah but they were in a military so they do have some colorful stories to share absolutely um, Williams, how about you? Who, who do you kind of view as a, a mentor or role model here at CMA? I'd have to agree with Barbu. I think my tax um, for Sergeant Hunter is definitely like my biggest role model right now. Um, he's like, he's almost like another dad to me, honestly. 
you know, tax are there for you. Like if you need something, you can ask them like questions, you can ask them anything, honestly. They'll be, they'll be there. They'll be there for you to support you. So. And I want to get you guys, I want you to get some feedback on this. You know, a lot of people, when they think military school, they think that it's going to be a boot camp, you know, just a, a real tough, hard ass environment 24 um, seven. What would you tell someone since you've been here now for a couple of years, what would you tell someone who maybe has that preconceived concept in their mind? Well, everybody always asks like, how is the boot camp?" And I get so mad. I'm like, it's not boot camp because it's, it's really not that much military when the biggest military part is just when you're not in school. But otherwise, it's like kind of like a regular school day, but more organized throughout the day. Yeah. William, how about you? Um, I'd like to add on what Barbu said again. Um, it's, compared to a lot of other military schools, it's really not like a boot camp. It's it's really more organized and just like, you know, be on time, you know, turn in assignments on time, all that type of stuff. So, yeah, what I tell parents when I talk with them a lot is, you know, we're not a boot camp, but, you know, we're not focusing on. Um, military instruction. So we're not going to teach them how to go and invade a foreign country or anything like that, but we're going to talk about, you know, um, character building, leadership, integrity, honor, those type things. So just kind of use the principles on the foundations of what, you know, being in the military is all about. All right. Um, Captain Trapp, if you would, would you kind of walk us through the admissions process and kind of explain to families who may be interested in transferring what's next? Right. So like Casey talked about, you know, if you want some, preliminary information, you want to talk one-on-one -on -one with myself or, or Casey, uh, we would love to do that. So you can reach out to us and just get some some information if you're still a little bit hesitant about it. But uh, step one for us is putting in an application. You can apply on our website. Um, it's very easy. We've got our school year application uh, all online. So once you submit that, uh, it comes straight to myself. It also comes to uh, Casey. And so we, we look at it, we look over it, we send you a response. And that response lets you uh, send in some unofficial transcripts like we talked about earlier. And it sets up a time for your son to have an interview with us. And that interview process can be done virtually because um, we've got guys from all over. So you don't have to drive to us to have that interview. We can do it over Zoom or over the phone, whichever one works best for, for your schedule. And then um, based on those, we make a determination as far as acceptance. But um, if you can, you know, always tell parents if – if you're still a little bit hesitant or, you know, maybe maybe your son's a little bit hesitant, um, I always say coming to an open house or even a virtual event like we're having tonight, that's a great way to just get more information, especially if you have cadets there that can sh share their experiences, um, especially with, with your son. You know, sometimes it it goes a long way when they have someone of their same age talking to them. But, yeah, if you're interested in the admissions process, um, reach out to us, contact us, and, um, yeah, just get that application process started. All right. And we do have, you know, YouTube lives like this, but we also have some Zoom scheduled that are that are coming up um, sometime here in the near future. Um, we have a couple, I think, scheduled between now and Thanksgiving. We can talk to you about, you know, more transfer if you want to. You know, the good thing, this is nice to get to a larger reach uh, and a bigger group of people. But for Zooms, you can actually talk about individual situations, um, you know, and, and face to face, and which is pretty nice. All right. I had a couple of questions come in here. Um, question from Twitter is the best lesson learned while you've been here at CMA. Wow, that's pretty deep. Um, let's start off with Barbu on that one. What's the best lesson you've learned since you've been here at CMA? Um, be patient, honestly. I I guess like patience isn't something we think about all the time. But before I came here, I was always like, OK, when's the next thing going to happen? But being patient is something that you kind of learn and pick up by being here from standing in for formation, waiting for your launch, waiting for all the other cadets. It's just something that you need throughout the day or else you won't have it. And I will say that's something most men are not very good at is having patience. So uh, that's probably a very valuable tool. My wife tells me I need to practice on that some more myself. Um, all right. I've got another question from Twitter um, that says, do you have any tips for parents having a hard time letting go? Yikes. 
let's see what Trap has to say about this one. What do you tell a mom that calls up? And I mean, we get some tear jerkers calling us, and you know they're they're crying and they're at the wits end and don't know what to do. What do you tell them? Yep, it always seems to be you know sometimes it's the dads, but most of the time it's the uh, the moms that struggle with it. And you know, I always tell them that you know you're not you're not giving your your boy away. You know, he's going to be in good hands. He's going to be able to develop into the young man and reach his potential. And and you know it's it's always nice to, we've got, you know, a lot of support, you know, so for example, parents coming in, if, if a mom wants to talk to a mom of a current cadet, we've got a lot of moms and families that'll reach out, kind of share their experiences with them. Um, because it's, it's always a positive experience. You know, I've had, uh, just last year, I had a mom who was very much so like that. And then it's funny when she came to pick up her son, it just, it was night and day. I mean, she couldn't even hardly believe it was still um, the son that she dropped off, but you know, they can still reach out to you. You'll still get time to talk to them. Um, but it is tough. And, you know, I always tell them that, you know, just reach out to some of those parents kind of hear about their experiences. And then, um, you know, just sometimes you got to kind of let him out of the nest and be on his own a little bit to kind of develop. But uh, those would be my tips to, to parents that are struggling with letting go. And, um, you know, I think, Sometimes in that two week period that they don't have their phones and stuff, sometimes I think it's harder on the parents than it is with the with the boy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely is. You know, I call that um, boy sickness instead of homesickness. It's actually the boy sickness because the boy the, the parents are missing the boy so much. And um, Jaden, you're just from Columbia, so not too far away. But let's throw it at Barbu because you're from Michigan. There's a lot of miles between here and, and Ann Arbor, Michigan. So um, how did you parents kind of deal with it? Were, were your mom were they weepy when they were dropping you off or did they celebrate when they dropped you off? Kind of <laughs> give us the rundown for what happened on your family with that. My parents definitely did not celebrate when they dropped me off. They were not happy about it, but they knew that it was necessary. And my mom kind of handled it like she joined this uh, Facebook group called Moms in Prayer with the headmaster's wife and a lot of the other moms of students are in that Facebook group chat and it's kind of like her way of connecting with the other moms and knowing that she's not the only mother who's suffering from not seeing her kid. It's their kind of way of like talking about it with each other and they of course pray in the moms and prayer trap. Yeah. But it is okay to, you know, um, call and check on your son. You can call the TAC officers, you can call um, the registrar and talk about grades. Um, you know, we're here, we understand that you've entrusted us with hopefully your most prized possession. And, you know, we want to make sure that we're doing the best that we can, you know, with your son and meeting all these um, standards and, and goals that both you have set for him and that we've set for him. And um, so always feel free to call and check in um, on how he's doing. Now, Jaden, Columbia is just 30 miles away, but you are away from mom. So did she have a hard time letting go? She did at first. Um, I remember when we got our phones back from my uh, my first year for two weeks. She she actually cried. She was like really sad about me leaving. I was like super surprised. I was like, Mom, you know, I'm like only 30 miles away. And she's like, I know, but it's so hard. And I was like, Yeah, but <laughs> you're um, the baby. I feel like, right? yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she, um, I thought she'd be like used to it because you know my brother, but I guess. You know, it's like mom, mom thing, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely different being parents. You know, I've sent kids off to college now. And, um, you know, when I sent my son, it was OK. You know, he was going to be fine. He was off at college. I sent my daughter. I was a little more worried because, you know, that's my daughter. Um, but let me tell you, parents, it's not so bad once they're out of the house. So um, if you want to jumpstart on the empty nest syndrome, um, my wife and I have actually enjoyed it. We're able to travel and stuff uh, again. So uh, it's, it's not as bad as, as some build it up to be. But, you know, um, we want you to stay involved with your son, though. So don't just feel like you drop him off and we're done and, and we don't talk to you again until Christmas. You know, please come to sporting events. Please come to um, parades that we have. You know, make yourself visible here on campus. That helps us uh, and it helps your son. Um, nothing's better than for him to, you know, see mom at, at Christmas break when she pulls up in her car. Um, you know, these guys get really excited at break times, but so do the employees, so do the faculty, because we want to break as well. So, but um, it is good to see parents on campus and, you know, kind of see the pride they have in their son. And, you know, and 
they talked to us. There was one lady who walked up to uh, to Captain Trap at uh, fall break, and I just happened to be standing by and heard it. But she was like, I just want to thank you so much because I was kind of on the line. I didn't know if this was the right decision or not. And I think they kind of said they were coming and then changed their mind and said they were coming and changed their mind. And then finally took the leap of faith. And the boy and the parents are both so happy, you know, and so um you know i've been doing this a long time 25 years mac you've been in admissions for a couple of years but that has to make you feel pretty good right oh it does yeah and there's nothing better than that i, I love both the reactions from the boys and the parents but yeah it makes me very proud yeah it's you know i just love kind of seeing the uh, transformation happen um while guys are here all right if you have any last minute questions you can throw them in the chat or again on any social media platform using that hashtag came to military um but i want to ask these guys to, to kind of speak to their parents for a second. Maybe they're watching now live, or maybe they'll watch the playback later. Um, but guys, if you just kind of look into the camera, talk to your mom and dad, uh, you know, kind of what do you want to say to them about Camden? Was this a good decision, bad decision? Um, do you thank them? Do you hate them? You know, just kind of tell us kind of talk to mom and dad. Barbu, you go first. All right. Hi, mom and dad. I'm pretty sure at least mom is watching. Um, honestly, I wish I was sent here earlier because although so many opportunities have opened up and I'm very thankful for that, even more could have opened up if I was sent here earlier and I could have already had those habits formed. So. All right. And William, it's your turn. Hi, mom and dad. I want to thank you for sending me to CMA. Honestly, without this place, I really don't think I'd have the amount of structure I do in my life. Um, it's been a real eye opener. Seriously. Um, you know, I've been cleaning my room. I've been doing things uh, without being told to do them like four or five different times. So I just want to thank you for that. So I really do think this was the right decision for me. I really think I needed the structure in my life. So. All right. Okay, while y'all were talking, that was a perfect way to end, but while you were talking, I actually got another question, so I don't want to leave them hanging out here. But um, it says, what is one thing the cadets are most proud of since they've been here at CMA? Wow, okay. Um, Williams, what's something that's made you really proud of yourself since you've been here at CMA? I feel like talking to, like, different people, like, so, you know, we have people from, like, all over the world. Like, we have people from China, like, you know, other parts of the globe. So I feel like, you know, being able to talk with them and like learning the culture and stuff. I feel like that's really cool. So, yeah. All right. How about you, Barbu? I'm probably most proud of my self-improvement, how much I'm getting involved with over here, uh, how many opportunities, like my grades. Even being on this YouTube live right now is a pretty cool experience because, I don't know, I feel like I was recognized. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Both of you guys are here for a reason. So <laughs> good job. All right. Well, that will do it for us tonight on this edition of Conversations with Camden. And I want to thank everybody who watched and um, thank you guys for participating and um, being here with us tonight. And if you have any questions about Canaan Military, please give us a call. Um, you, again, my uh, personal email is admissions at camdenmilitary.com. Mac Traps is enroll at camdenmilitary.com. If you forget both of those, just go to camdenmilitary.com, click on um, get in contact, get in touch, and that will come to us. We'll, we'll reach back out to you as quickly as possible. Again, thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next time on Conversation with Camden.